Hey guys, Dumbling97 coming back here with another video for you guys. This time we're going to be on Arctic region in some mediums. Um, this is a map that I see people misplay a lot in mediums because it is a bit of a map where you need a little bit more armor if you don't go to certain spots. So today I'm going to be showing you two bits of gameplay, one in this A44 and one in the E50M. So initially in the A44, I'm going to, uh, actually a pretty typical medium tank position that I recommend you probably should all go to if you're in mediums. And that would be right here in the middle of the map, especially on an encounter, because you can spot a lot of people coming towards the flag if you get here early enough. And because I'm top tier, I'm fairly confident that I shouldn't be compromised here. So from this position, we can spot everybody that would be crossing to go up into the hill to our left. That would be entering, and that would be entering the middle of the map. Now initially we don't spot anybody, but that could be in part because the A44's view range isn't exactly spectacular, but we do manage to sneak out a little ARL who was hiding there. He has six cents, he moved and took some cover. Now in higher tier matchups, if you come to this side and you do this, you can spot almost everybody crossing. Like I will probably would have spotted those two guys up there. The A44 just doesn't have good enough view range in itself. And then that's when we spotted M4A3, we put one into him. And then I decide, you know what, I need to relocate because while it is a good position for me, in the A44, because I'm rear turreted, I have little to no gun depression. So I figure that I need to move to a position where my gun depression really isn't a problem for me. So initially I'm pondering around the middle of the map because if I move up, I can spot people in their base because I know that people in their base, they always have you know, camping tank destroyers or maybe some mediums who think they're heavy or tank destroyers, I don't know. So that, that's exactly what I decided to do. I move to the middle and I move with these rocks, going all the way to the Sherman. I move to these rocks right here so that I cannot get shot from anything to my right. Try to put one more into the Sherman. I completely miss it, but our friend in the other A44 who, who's going to help us this whole game comes and saves me. And that's where we spot the Cromwell. Now, if I was in really any other tier 7 medium, like let's say a Panther right now, um, I might not have taken out that Shumbo that quick, that Shumbo, Jumbo that quickly, but I would have much more accurate long range fire than this. So, well, this position isn't great for an A44, and many other mediums, it's, it's pretty good. Because the A44 by far has the worst gun performance probably of any medium. 3.4 second aim time, 0.43 accuracy really holds this tank back at medium to long range. This is very much a close to medium medium range tank. So we're sniping at the A44, looking at the ARL. I am worried about the ARL because while, he's, while he is a tier under me, the ARL can mount a very nasty 105 millimeter. It has very high penetration and can definitely hurt me. But because this thing has a 107 millimeter, we take out about half the Cromwell's health there with just one shot. So then I decided I need to come down here and see what's down here and I find an AT-7 and this is just field day for me. And an AT-7 is so unmaneuverable that I can just control the situation completely. And we get shot from behind but I know it's only a Churchill 1 so I'm not bothered. Our friend helps us take out the AT-7, and then I see the Churchill, but I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about the ARL that's down there. Because as I said, the ARL has a very nasty gun. Let's find another target. We need some bad. Now, the ARL can't shoot me, and I can't shoot him, so I'm not worried right now. However, our teammate, once again, in the, in, uh, the ARL-44 helps us out there. And then I figure eh, I can just go kill this Churchill, shoot him, you know, wherever I want. And that's kind of a mistake here, because I actually end up bouncing off this guy twice. So, you know, don't underestimate the armor, because this gun also has low pen at 167 millimeters. So it's at this point in the game when I realize their base is about to be overran, or I should say their spawn. So I want to go flank these two uh, 
Chinese and Soviet heavy tanks. And that's when me and my other A44 buddy decide to go do it. This guy's been with me the whole game in the back helping me out, so I'm fairly confident that me and him can definitely lay down some pain here at the end of the game. So hopefully this gameplay is showing you that, um, I guess how to play a medium in this sort of situation where you're top tier and you have decent armor and you have um, opportunities to flank and move up in the map and spot for your team. Because if I wouldn't have moved up, wouldn't have spotted, I might not have gotten this much damage. The H7 might have moved into a better position. The ARL could have moved into a better position, but by moving up aggressively, we caused them both to sort of freeze. The H7 got completely outplayed, and the ARL didn't move from that spot again. So now we have an IS2. Now this is this is where I sort of whack everything. This is where everything goes wrong for me. So I missed my first shot. He's already put one into me. And I know he's about to reload, so I try to put another one into him, and it goes right into his turret. Because of my low gun impression, I'm jostling too much on the slope. And I'm thinking I'm dead, but Artie lands a shot into him. I land a shot into him. And two other people shoot him. Just in time to save my ass, so. Bit of a donkey play by me right at the end, but... At least we came out of it alive. I mean, on this map, once you get into more of the mid to late game, if your team's winning by a good amount, if you're in a medium tank especially, you can just flow around the map wherever you'd like. And it's really a good thing, because this map has, has a lot of roots around it to flank and all that sort of stuff. So we pick up a 46,000 credit for profit, 4,500 experience, two and a half, uh, no, 2.2 thousand damage, uh, over 1,100 assistance. We get a steel wall because we blocked more. Uh, we blocked more um, potential damage than we have health actually, which is very good in the medium. We usually don't see that too often, given this was a top tier matchup. We fired 17, hit 14, pen 12, which is pretty good considering we were firing some close, some very long range. All right, so this next bit of gameplay. I'm about to show you is going to be in the E50M on the same map. Now, this this tank on this map it can work well. Once again, I'm obviously in a top tier matchup. But what I mean by that, when they're top tier matchup, I mean it's tier nines and eights on the enemy team. So I really count that as a top tier matchup. So initially I'm going to go ahead and go over towards the typical medium tank locations and so as I said initially we're going to move over here towards the middle of the map and this is once again to get more spotting done so now I'm going to show you a position where you can get spotting done from this side of the map rather than the other side of the map. Now, exactly where this Leopard 1's going is where I would have liked to go, you know, popping up right here with the bush, right there to give you some extra camo. That's a really good position to spot, so I'm not going to compromise him. I'm going to go ahead and move on to a little bit more of an aggressive position. But because the E50M has such good armor, I figure if somebody starts shooting at me from this position, I can probably take the damage. Now, from this position, you can spot bigger heavies and tank destroyers leaving the base just as we do. There's an E100 platoon on the enemy team, so I really want to catch them out in the open, and that's when this E100 starts to panic. So we spot the C100, we put one into a side armor, and we have them lit up for the whole team that's on the alley. Artie shoots him, I shoot him, and then boom. In a matter of seconds, this guy's now down to about half health because he didn't make a decision fast enough. Now we're trying to scope out a shot on this other U100 because there's three of these guys, so I, I need to find them quick. I don't, I don't want to be jostling around too many U100s in this game. I try to find a shot on the other U100, but I can't. Now this position is a little bit risky for the E50M because I have a lack of gun oppression and I have to expose the side of my tank to get the gun oppression. But if you're in a, an American medium, a British medium, a Chinese medium tank, most of those have the gun oppression to... Uh, get over this ridge, and that's when we spot the other two E100s. I try to aim for the drive wheel here. I hit him, but I hit his front plate, unfortunately. So I'm backing up, looking around me, making sure there's nobody on the hill gonna put a shot into me. There's also three artillery in this game, so I have to really be careful about my positioning and where I go. So I don't wanna get focused by artillery, because if I do, 
E15 has good armor, but it's, it, it only has a very good front plate. The side and rear armor and top armor aren't exactly fabulous. So here you see us jostling with the gun depression again. We managed to put one into the E100 and track him out in the open, hopefully for our team to do some extra damage. We're gonna try to aim at the Ur drive loop, but we just don't have the DPM to get another shout out. So, here we're kind of deciding, should I move forward? Should I go somewhere else? And what I'm about to do is a very risky move once again, but because the E50M has such strong frontal armor and pretty good all around armor for a medium, I decide I can do this sort of risky move. What I'm doing here is I'm moving into these rocks right here, which once you get here, you're pretty well stuck here, especially because there's always tank destroyers camping to the right, as you see. Oh, and it's a Waffentrager Panzer IV and a T-30, so I do not want to expose myself to them unless I really want to, unless I want to shoot at them. So I'm staying behind the rock, trying to bait out a shot for the E-100s, trying to find, see if I can find one of them. But they're both behind that rock because they know my team is over there, and my team so far has killed one or two of them, so they're being very careful. So it's at this moment when I decide I want to engage the tank destroyers, and that's when I spot the Waffentrager. My shot looks like it went right through, un right under his gun, but due to our fantastic frontal armor, he bounces, and then as he throws, he shoots at us, but tr only tracks us. We come out for another poke of the Waffentrager. He bounces again off our upper plate, once again, just showing the excellent armor of the E50M, and that's when Artie starts to focus us. We put another one into the Waffentrager. Turn back towards the E100, because we I feel that he was watching me, but he's not gonna come out. T30 narrowly misses the side of my turret. I was being a little bit daft there and going all the way back like that. Pulling into the T30. And it's at this moment when I realize he's using the 120 millimeter, so he can match my rate of fire. So I decided to track him for some assistance damage. Hopefully my team will start putting some uh, shots into him. We bounce him off our upper plate. GW Tiger takes out another little portion of our health. I see if I can shoot him, but he's too far away and he's over a ridge, so or he's over a slight slope, so I can't hit him. I try to fire a clutch into the T-30 because I thought it was pointing at me, but all I did was shoot him in the track. I see the Waffen Trigger's not looking at me, so I'm gonna put him another one right through his frontal armor. He's now in a one hit. The M-53 takes another shot at us, and the Waffen Trigger pens our turret, which is probably the only big weak spot of the E-50M besides its lower plate, frontally. So, we were at about a thousand health, maybe 1300 health about 30 seconds ago, so now we have to watch our health a lot. So I'm trying to engage this E100 to get some more damage out of this game because I know that my team's gonna behind him. I track him, try to angle my arms best I can, try to coax him into shooting my frontal plate, and he manages in my track. So now I can shoot into his driver, we'll track him again, and now my team's just converging on him, so I'm, all, I'm barely certain that I'm safe and we finish him off with one last shot. Well, hopefully you guys took away that if you're in a medium like the E-15 with some armor or maneuverability that you can get into very aggressive positions like that and spawn for your team. And I also hope I showed you that um, there are some very good positions on both sides of the map to go into in the early game to get a very good um, idea of where the enemy team is going by spotting most of them. We finished second on our team with 3,800 damage and over 3,500 assistance damage. We blocked 2,010 damage with our armor, which is very good in a, in a medium. Most mediums can't, can't even take a shot, whereas this one can block almost its whole health. Well guys, um, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed. The Xbox One release is... Uh, now live, it's July 28th as I'm recording this because I was a nub and when I recorded this the day before um, I didn't have my microphone on so yeah points on there for me well guys I hope you enjoyed the HD-ness of our new Xbox One hopefully we'll get to see all of its great potential and have fun playing the game alright guys thanks for watching um, if you enjoyed subscribe for more and have a nice day don't blink 97 up peace